Kamala Harris was born October the 20th, 1964. She's an American politician and attorney serving as the 49th Vice President of the United States. She is the United States' first female Vice President, the highest ranking female official in U.S. history, and she's the first African American and first Asian American Vice President. As a member of the Democratic Party, she served as the United States Senator from California from 2017 to 2021 and as the Attorney General of California from 2011 to 2017. Harris became Vice President upon inaugural in January of 2021 alongside President Joe Biden. She was born in Oakland, California. Harris graduated from Howard University and the University of California Hastings College of the Law. She began her career in the Almeda County District Attorney's Office before being recruited to the San Francisco District Attorney Office and later the City Attorney of San Francisco's Office. Harris sought the 2020 Democratic presidential nomination but withdrew from the race prior to the preliminaries. Biden selected Harris as his running mate in August of 2020, and their ticket went on to win the general election in November. Harris assumed office as Vice President of the United States of America on January 20th, 2021. She says her mother had a saying, Kamala, you may be the first to do many things, but make sure you're not the last. She also says, what's important for my daughter to know is that if you are fortunate to have opportunity, it is your duty to make sure other people have those opportunities as well. I tell you, this is a great woman. This is our woman of the week in recognition for our Women's um, Month, History Month, and this is Kamala Harris. As we turn our attention to our scripture on today, our scripture will come from John 3, verses 16 and 17. St. John 3, 16 and 17. And it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him.
Father God in heaven, it's in the name of Jesus Christ we come. God, we thank you for another privilege. We thank you, Father God, that you are the answer to the world's unrest. We thank you for another chance, Father God, to honor you, to praise you, to magnify you, to glorify you once again. God, we thank you, Father God, that you are God and you are God alone. We thank you, Father God, for having mercy upon us, for blessing our lives to roll on just a little while longer, realizing, Lord, that we don't deserve it, but you have been gracious to us. You continue to bless us. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Now, Lord, we pray, Father God, that you forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for falling short, for messing up, for not doing the things that are pleasing in your sight. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us with your word. Bless your word to fall on good soil. Bless your word to go forward, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Bless your word, Father God, that your word will reign and super reign. That, Father God, that we will honor you through your word and that your word will speak to us. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, and anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Jesus is the answer. He is the way. Jesus is the answer. He is. He is the answer. He is the answer. There is none like him. Jesus is the way. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Jesus Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let me call your attention to Luke chapter 18. The book is Luke. The chapter is 18. The verses are 35 through 43. Luke chapter 18, verses 35 through 43. <clears throat> In the New Testament, the book is St. Luke. The chapter is 18. Verses are 35 through 43. When you found it, you will discover these words. Then it happened as he was coming near Jericho that a certain blind man sat by the road begging. In hearing a multitude passing by, he asked what it meant. So they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And he cried out saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those who went before warned him that he should be quiet. But he cried out all the more. Son of David, have mercy upon me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he had come near, he asked him saying, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I might, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. I want to talk about healer in chief. Healer in chief. Just about a year and a half ago, most of you were made aware that Sister Davis was going through some great physiological problems within her body. Most of you were already aware that cancer had set in and it was becoming a tremendous tear upon her body. Most of you were aware and are aware that 
that cancer has a way of taking its toll on a person's body. Many of you are aware of the fact that whenever there is cancer in your body, you need a healer. You need a great physician. You need a doctor. So as we made our way over to Methodist Sugar Land Hospital, we landed in the hands of Dr. Jorge Dalcor. They look upon Dr. Jorge Dalcor as an oncologist that really knows what he's doing. During the process of the treatment, he, pres he presented some diagnosis and some prognosis. He was always comforting. He was always one who made his bedside manners real. Dr. Dalcor is known in the Methodist system as a great oncologist. Even when, even when, when other doctors would make suggestions, he didn't tear them down. He just said, those are great doctors, and he stuck to his plan. Whenever other doctors tried to interfere with what his treatment plan was going to be, he realized that they had an opinion, but it wasn't the same opinion as his. So Dr. Dalcor, he, he pushed forward with his treatment. However, during the first three months, the first two months, the first month, the, the, the treatment did not take good effect. But Dr. Dalcor kept pushing. He, he kept pushing along with his treatment until the second treatment began to take effect right away. Oh, Sister Davis is rejoicing now. She's singing now. She's excited now. She, she's praising the Lord like she never has before because she has a great report. And her report is that she's cancer-free. When we look at the text today, when we find the text today, we find a man on the side of the road. He's on the side of the road, and he is a beggar. He's looking for food. He's looking for money. He's asking folk for anything he can get. He's a beggar. In our society today, we don't think much of beggars because beggars get on our nerves. <laughs> Because beggars run people away from the gas station. Because beggars run people out of the restaurant. So management don't care much for beggars because beggars make them uncomfortable because they make their customers uncomfortable. But here we are today. It is said to be blind Bonamares who, who is calling on Jesus this day. Now, when you look at this same pericope in Matthew chapter 20, beginning at verse number 30, and also in Mark chapter 18, beginning at verse number 36, you will find out that some of them record two men on the side of the road. But here Luke focuses on just one man on the side of the road. Theologians believe that there were two men on the side of the road. The theologians believe that there were two men begging. Theologians believe that there were two blind men on the side of the road. But Bartimaeus was bold enough to speak up for both of them. So here we have a blind man on the side of the road. He's begging. He lived his life begging. He, he went from day to day begging. He, he was a beggar on the side of the road. He was dependent on other people. He, he plotted right there. He planted himself right there every day, begging on the side of the road. The Bible says in the New King James Version, they call, he calls him a, a certain blind man. Says that he sat on the side of the road and he was begging on the side of the road. But one day, blind Bartimaeus heard he heard some noise. He heard a multitude. He, he heard some stuff going on. He, he heard people walking around. He heard a commotion going on. And blind by the man wanted to know what in the world is going on. 
I want to stop right here and let you know just because you're blind and you still got the faculty of hearing, you need to use what you have. Let me tell you, just because you're crippled, you ought to use what sense you have. Just because you're struggling in your physiological makeup, you ought to use whatever you have. He used. He used what he had. He, he used what he had. He couldn't see, but he used, first of all, his ear, and he heard. The problem with many of us today, we can, we can see but we won't use our brain to activate our heart. He heard, he heard, first of all, he heard a commotion. He heard a noise. He heard a multitude. So he heard, even though he couldn't see. The second thing he did, he spoke. Just because you can't see, you, you can speak. And if you can speak, you ought to raise your voice when you're in trouble. When you're in trouble, you ought to raise your voice. Let me tell you, there will be some people that try to shout you down, but when you're in trouble, you ought to raise your voice. There used to be a commercial out where a senior citizen had fallen on the kitchen floor and, and people make jokes about it, but she says, I have fallen and I can't give up. She says, I've fallen and I can't give up. Let me tell you, there are many of you, there are many of you, there are many of you who are listening to me today. There are many of you who are seeing me today. There are many of you who are present with me today. You have fallen and you can't get up. You've fallen into sin. You've fallen into trouble. You've fallen with the wrong person. You've fallen with the wrong thing. And you cannot get up. I want to say to you today, Whatever faculties you have, whatever abilities you have, use what you have. The blind man made a use. He moved. He used what he had. He he used what he had. He could hear, so he used his hearing. He could speak, so he used his voice. And let me just share with you, blind Von Amaris, this man, this blind man on the side of the road, he heard a multitude passing by. He asked somebody else. What is this commotion about? What is all this going on? Let me tell you, if you got a voice, you better ask some questions when you don't understand. If you're in class, you better ask some questions when you don't understand. Uh, we are in the middle of a pandemic and, and we are looking for answers. Therefore, we got to ask some questions. We got to be willing to ask questions. Don't be shy about asking questions. In school, the only dumb question is a question that has not been asked. So he asked the question, what is all this going on? What, what does this mean? What is this meant? What's going on here? Let me know what's going on. So they told him that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. They told him Jesus. They told him Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Let me tell you, when Jesus is present, there ought to be a commotion. Amen. When Jesus is present, there ought to be some excitement. When Jesus is present, it ought to be something going on that usually don't go on because Jesus is present. My first point here, my first point is there ought to be some revelation. <laughs> there ought to be revelation. Now, let me tell you, it was revealed unto this blind man that it was Jesus who was passing by. Mm -hmm. Whenever you have this revelation, regardless if you read it, if it's a true revelation, regardless if people tell it to you or not, whenever there's a revelation that Jesus is passing by, you need to look a little further. Yes. So there is the revelation. The revelation was that Jesus was passing by, and that's why all this commotion was going on. It was a commotion going on. It was a lot of stuff going on. It was a lot of carrying out going on because Jesus was passing by. You need to ask some questions so you can get a revelation. He, he found out, verse number 38, he found out. He, it was revealed unto him, the verse number 37, it was revealed unto him. And then in verse number 38, he made his request. My first point to you today that there will be a revelation of Jesus. And secondly, there ought to be a request from Jesus. Look at it. When you're in trouble, when you got, got things going on, when things are not going your way, you better request mercy of Jesus. Look at what he said. He says, he says, the text declares, and he cried out, 
said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. He cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. You need to make a request today. You need to make a request today. But see, if you're stuck on who you are, you won't make a request. If you think you're good and you, you, you think you got it going on, you won't make a request. When you are fooling yourself like you're stuck on yourself, like you're somebody else, you won't make a request. Bartimaeus didn't have that kind of pride. He made a request. When you get a revelation that Jesus is nearby, you need to make a request. He says he, said he didn't make a request of the soldiers. He didn't make a request of the disciples. He didn't make a request of people in the crowd. He made a request of Jesus. Let me tell you, when you make a request, you better make your request to the right person. When, when you got stuff going on and, and you got a revelation that Jesus is present, you need to make your request of Jesus, the son of David. Make a request of Jesus, the son of David. Jesus, the son of David. And you need to make your request known well. He says, have mercy upon me. We all need mercy. We need to be asking Jesus every day, every night to have mercy upon us. You make your request known to him. Have mercy upon me. He says, have mercy upon me. Then he moves to verse number 39. He says, the text declares that then those who went before warned him that he ought to shut up. My third point to you is in the midst of your trouble. In the midst of all that's going on around you, there's going to be some rejection. <laughs> yeah, when Jesus is revealed, when there's a revelation, when, when, when Jesus, Jesus is revealed and there's a revelation, you made your request, there will still be some rejection. There will always be people in the crowd that, that don't have your best interest at heart. There will always be people in the crowd that will tell you to shut up. There will always be people in the crowd that will tell you to be quiet and to be silent. I want to say to you today, they mean you no good. See, as long as the blind man was dependent on them, they were all right. You got some friends like that. You got some kinfolk like that. As long as you have to depend on them, they're all right with you. But the moment you go to Jesus and make a request for yourself, they will always reject you. So they told him, you ought to be quiet. You, you should be quiet, man. You ought to keep silent. You ought not raise your voice like that. But he doesn't even answer them. The text declares to us this morning that, that we ought not even give attention to those who reject us. <laughs> the, te the text declares that we ought not pay attention to those who reject us. We ought not even get in the middle of their mess. Don't even pay them any attention because they don't have a heaven to send you to, nor a hell to put you in. And suddenly they're not the healer in chief. He, he, didn't, he didn't worry about what they said. The text doesn't say, doesn't say that he, he worried about them. The, the Bible doesn't say that he, he told them that I got to call Jesus. He, he didn't even explain to them why he was calling Jesus. He just kept calling Jesus. I want to say to you today, you need to repeat your request. You need to constantly repeat your request. Until you get Jesus' attention, until he manifests your blessing, you need to repeat your request. The Bible says, the Bible says in verse number 39, Luke chapter 18, verse number 39, the Bible declares that they warned him that he ought to be quiet. And then it says, and he cried out the more. When folk try to shut you down, you ought to cry out the more. When folk try to, 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 to push you aside, you ought to cry out the more. The Bible says he cried out the more, son of David, have mercy upon me. I never will forget the jealousy that occurs in the pulpit. 
I remember even as a young man, I, I went to a visiting church and, uh, and I was sitting in the pulpit and the preacher was preaching and, and he was really getting after it and he was getting excited about it and he was doing such an excellent job of exposing the word and what the word was saying until the big preacher in the house got jealous. He, pulled, he made his way to the young man who was standing behind the pulpit preaching the word of God with excitement and conviction. He took him by his shoulder and pushed him down in the chair. He got back up and he kept preaching. He picked him down, took him by his shoulder and pushed him down in the chair. He got back up and he kept right on preaching. He just kept preaching the word and I was hollering at him. I was yelling at him. Preach, preacher, preach. Go ahead and preach the word. Preach the word. Until they took the microphone from him and he kept preaching the word. He kept preaching with no microphone. Let me tell you, when your haters reject you, you cry out the more. When people don't want you to have a good job, you cry out the more. When people tell you there's no sister, you going down there. That job is for somebody else. You cry out the more. The blind man cried out the more. Let me just say to you today, folk can always tell you what's best for you when they're not going through what you're going through. People always have better advice for you. People always can tell you the best for you when they're not going what's going through what you're going through. Many people said to Sister Davis, you don't have any business down there at Methodist. Sugarland, you need to make your way over to MD Anderson. MD Anderson is the best route to go. MD Anderson is the best cancer treatment place in the world. MD Anderson is full of folk that have great testimonies. Folk can always tell you the best thing to do when they're not going through what you're going through. But there's one thing about Dr. Dalcor, one thing about, uh, about his staff, while she was sitting in one apartment, one apartment, they would text her and tell her, when you leave that apartment, go down the hallway around the corner to your next apartment. They stayed on top of it. Let me just say to you, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're going to make sure you're blessed of God, if you're gonna get in touch with the healer in Jesus, you need to stay in contact with the maker himself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Sister Davis had, a, had an attitude where she was going to wear them to death until they blessed her. I mean, she called the doctor on a regular basis. She emailed the doctors on a regular basis. She, she, she emailed and texted on a regular basis. Let me just say to you, if you don't look out for you, no one will look out for you. The text, the text, the class that the blind man, when they tried to shut him up, when they tried to shut him down, he cried out the more. Yes. I'm telling you, you need to repeat your request. Whenever there's a revelation that Jesus is around, whenever you make a request, you need to make that request from Jesus the Christ. And then when you hate us and your rejects, those who reject you try to push you aside, you repeat your request. Because when you do that and Jesus is present, you have a reward. <laughs> look at the text. Look at the text. The Bible says, the Bible says, Jesus, verse number 40, the Bible says, Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. Look at what Jesus does. All of these who are part of this crowd, now they have to focus their attention on this blind man. Those, that man, that man, one or two, those men who they walked around, those men who they walked the path, walked past, those men who they refused, they refused to help out. They didn't want those men to get help. They didn't want this man to get help. But let me tell you, if you keep hollering a lot louder, when you keep screaming a lot louder, when you keep celebrating a lot louder, when you keep requesting the more, then you can have a reward. Some folk are not blessed like they want to be blessed because they pray one time and they don't. <laughs> they subscribe to the idea that if you ask God for something 
and he didn't give it to you, you ought to stop asking. Paul says, I had a thorn in my side. And I, this thorn was in my side. It, it was hurting me. It was causing me pain. It was difficulty for me. But I asked the Lord three times to take it out. Paul kept crying out to the Lord until the Lord answered him. And God said to Paul, my grace is sufficient. So when we look at the text, we find out that the, the writer of the class, that Jesus ordered the people to bring the blind man or the blind men to him. Let me just show you, God has a way of rearranging some things so you can get your reward. <laughs> God has a way of rearranging. He has a way of restructuring. He has a way of reorganizing things so you can get your reward. He got a way of doing it like nobody else can. You just keep repeating your request. You just keep repeating and Jesus rearranged the atmosphere and Jesus said, those of you who are crying out, those of you who are telling to be quiet, those of you who are against him, go and you bring him to me. It's in the text. It's in the text. Jesus has a way of reorganizing, restructuring, and rearranging some things. He says, the text says that Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he had come near, Jesus asked him, saying, what do you want me to do for you? You, you need to understand that Jesus knows where you are. Jesus knows the predicament you're in. Jesus knows what you're going through. But I want to tell you, you got to spell it out to Jesus. You see, God already knows what we need. God already knows how we need things. God already knows what we're going through, but it just does so much for the relationship. So much for the fellowship with God when we tell God what we need. We got to tell him what we need. We, when we need deliverance, tell God what we need. When we need a man, we tell God what we need. Don't go out there and get you a jerk. Wait on God to come and bring him to you. When we need a woman, we ask God for it. When we need a job, ask God for it. When we need a house, ask God for it. When we need good help, ask God for it. Make your request known over and over and over again. Jesus asked him, what do you need? And it says to us today that in our prayers, we need to be specific. We need to tell God, God, touch me right here. It, it hurts right here. If you don't fix this thing right here, God, you, you, it won't get fixed unless you fix it. Let me just share with you. Sister Davis prayed about a lot of things. But for the last year and a half, she was very specific <laughs> in what she asked God for. God, I'm asking you, when I go back to see Dr. Darkhorn, I want you to show me that this tumor had began to shrink. Lord, I'm asking you, when I go back to see the doctor, I'm asking you to let it go from two centimeters to one centimeter. God, I'm asking you, when I go back to see the doctor, I'm asking you that if it already is one centimeter, I ask you to make it disappear. We have to be specific in what we ask God. Blind man was specific. Jesus asked him a question, and he, and he didn't say nothing like, Lord, here I am again with my head bowed down to the mother's dust. Here I am again knowing, God, that I'm not fit to live. I'm, I'm not good enough to die. Here I am, God, once again, me, your weak and humble servant, asking you again to go to the hospital. He didn't do any of that. He said, bless me. He said, have mercy, have, have mercy, have mercy, because he was talking to the healer in chief. He was talking to the healer in chief, and as he talked to the healer in chief, he asked for a healing. He didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for clothing. He asked for a healing. Whatever your issue is, ask God for that and leave that other stuff alone. He says, he said, what do you want me to do for you? He says, what do you want me to do for you? What, what do you want me to do for you? It says, what do you want me to do for you? It says, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to 
to do for you. He says, Lord, that I might receive my sight. He says, Lord, that I might receive my sight. He didn't say, Lord, I don't want to walk better. He didn't say, Lord, I need a woman. He didn't say, Lord, I need an education. He said, Lord, I want you to help me receive my sight. First of all, he knew Jesus because he called him his Lord. He says, Lord, the one who commands me, the one who I follow, the one who does what I want him to do, the one who controls my life, Lord, I want you to make sure that I receive my sight. Yeah, he, he wants his reward. He, he wants his reward. And he, 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 didn't, he didn't tell Jesus when, but he asked Jesus for his reward. He wanted a reward of receiving his sight. Verse 42 says, then Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Jesus says, Jesus says to him, receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. You see that he was operating in faith because they could have pushed him out the crowd and, and he didn't care what folk thought of him. Some people don't witness for Jesus because they're concerned about what the rejectors would think of them. You, we're, you're worried about what, what others are thinking of you when God wants to use you and God wants to bless you. You are more concerned about others than you are concerned about the healer in chief. Yeah, he's the healer in chief. His name is, is Jesus. It, Jesus says, now next point, my next point to you is receive your blessing. Right. Receive, receive your blessing. It, he says, he asked, he, re, he requested, and, and he, re, he, he had some rejection, and, but then he asked for his reward, and Jesus says, receive your blessing. He says, receive it. He said, and see, many times we don't have our blessings because we don't receive our blessings. Many times we don't get blessed because we don't receive what God has for us. God has a blessing for you. God is looking to bless you. And not only does he have a blessing for you, he has blessings for you. He wants to keep right on blessing you. Receive your blessing by faith. We walk in faith. He says, your faith has made you well. Your crying didn't make you well. Your hollering didn't make you well. Your, your moaning didn't make you well. Some folk think if they shed tears, that gets God's attention. Let me tell you, it's impossible to please God except you have faith. So your faith will make you well. When he talks about this word, this phrase of making you well, the word well refers to not only are you going to be physically healed, but you're going to be spiritually healed. When you're, when you're made well, God not only deals with your physical body, he deals with your spiritual body. He says your faith has made you well. Too many people, even in the church, have no faith. They talk faith. They impress folk with, like they got faith. They act like they got faith. But when the rubber meets the road, they fall to pieces. It's because they lack faith. Jesus says to this man, receive your sight. Your faith has made you whole. And finally, in verse number 43, and immediately he received his sight. You see, God has perfect timing. God has perfect timing. God has a timing that we don't know about. That's why we have to keep having faith. That's why we have to keep praying because God is trying to do something in us, with us, and through us that we don't know about. The Bible says, and immediately he received his sight and he followed him. The blind man that used to sit on the side of the road received his sight and then he followed Jesus. Let me just share with you today that once you begin to see, once God opens your eyes, you ought to follow the one who has opened your eyes. 
He didn't, he didn't get blessed of God and then went off somewhere else and start worshiping somebody else or something else. He began to follow Jesus. The Bible says he glorified God and all the people, when they saw it, gave praises to God. My final point today is there ought to be some rejoicing. <laughs> there ought to be some rejoicing of who Jesus is and what God has already done. There ought to be rejoicing. He is the healer in chief. The text declares that not only did the man glorify God, he gave glory to God because of the Son of God. Not only did he glorify God, but he also followed Jesus. When God has blessed you, when God has really picked you up and turned you around, when God has really healed you, when God has really done great things for you, the Bible says you ought to follow Jesus. You ought to follow him, you ought to glorify God, and you ought to rejoice. And the text says rejoicing is contagious. It's right there in the text. It says rejoicing is contagious. It says and when they saw it, when the folks saw it, when the haters saw it, when the rejectors saw it, when those who didn't know God saw it, they gave praises to God. Let me just tell you, you ought to give praises to God. You ought to give praises to him for who Jesus is and what Jesus has already done. You ought to give praises to him because Jesus is of the lineage of David. It was imperative, I tell you, for him to respect Jesus as the son of David because God had made a divinity covenant with David and God had said to David that I'm going to bless the savior of the world to come down through 42 generations. It's going to be out of the lineage of David. It was the lineage of David because in Matthew chapter 1, it gives you the genealogy of Jesus through the, his, his legal father, Joseph. It talks about Jesus coming down through 42 generations. Joseph was of the lineage of David. And then in Luke chapter 3, it gives you the fact that he's the lineage of, of David because of his biological mother Mary. It gives him as the lineage of David. Jesus is a descendant of David through adoption. Jesus is a descendant of David through blood. Therefore, he is the great Messiah. He is Jesus the Christ, the anointed one. He is the greatest expression of lordship. He is dear to himself. He is the great dominion and power of God himself. Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. Jesus is the long-awaited deliverer. He is the long-awaited Messiah. He is the long-awaited healer. He is the root of David. He is the offspring of David. Being the root of David, he is the great creator himself. He's the offspring of David. He is the descendant of the son of God. He has made, been made flesh. He is the son of God. He is the son of God. He is the son of David. He is the lamb that was crucified on an old rugged cross. His name is Jesus. Jesus the Christ, he died over 2,000 years ago. They killed him on a skull hill called Calvary. He gave up the, the, his breath that day. He gave up the ghost that day. He gave up his spirit that day. He died on an old rugged cross. He died on an old rugged cross. Mean men killed him. And after he died, they pierced him in his side. Out came blood and water. They took my Lord and my God. Jesus the Christ. They laid him in a barber tomb. But out of that third day morning, he rose from the dead with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And if you're listening to me today, he got up in my life. Not only did he get up from the grave, he got up in my life. And you can be a witness today to him. You must be. You got to be. You have to be born again. He wants to heal your sin sick soul. Jesus the Christ. Have you tried him? Will you try him? Ain't he all right? He 
His name is Jesus, the righteous Lamb of God. If you're listening to me today, you can get to know him today. You can get to know Jesus the Christ today. He is the Lamb of God who died for the sins of this world. Will you try him today? Will you invite him into your life today? Will you rejoice today? And you can only do that if you're saved. If you're born again. If Jesus is a part of your life. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Don't try to get it right. You can't get it right. You need to trust Jesus. He's the only one can get it right for you. The door is open. The invitation is extended. Will you bow your head with me right now and invite Jesus into your life? Just believing the story that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. But early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. The door is open. Will you come? Just bow your head with me and invite him in. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins and rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Will you join me in this prayer? Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you pray this prayer, you're now born again. We believe that when you die, you're on your way to heaven. We believe that Jesus the Christ is your Savior. Now go ahead and make him your Lord by trusting him, walking with him, serving him, and being with him. There may be others of you who are saved, but for some reason or the other, you have not dedicated your life to him. You have not been a part of him and you've not allowed him to be a part of you. You've been doing whatever you want to do any way you want to do it. I recommend that you submit to Jesus and his lordship. Allow him to be the master. Allow him to be the king. Allow him to be the ruler of your life. Let me pray with you. Lord, we come now thanking you for these who have not been all they know they should be. We ask you to convict them, convince them, convince them, and bless them. Put them back on the right track. Bless them to get back in church. Bless them to walk according to your standards. And bless them to be blessed by you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. I want to thank you so much. If you're looking for a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the healer in chief, where Jesus is the captain of the ship, where Jesus is the one who makes all the difference. If you want to join the New Beginning Church, please inbox me and let me know, and I'll make sure that you get all the necessary materials to be a part of this great church in Southeast Houston. Whether you're near or far, we want you to join. Be a part. Some have joined that's out of state. Some have joined in the city. Some have joined in state out of the city. We ask you to be a part of the New Beginning Church. And we're looking forward to seeing you soon here at the New Beginning Church. If you've received Christ or rededicated your life to Christ today, inbox me and let me know so I can rejoice with you. So I can 
welcome you to the family of faith. Amen. Thank God. It is now offering time. It's now time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give unto the Lord. For those of you who are worshiping with us presently today, you can pick up your envelope at the back, fill it out, put your money in it, and come now, come forth and give, uh, give unto the Lord. For those of you who are giving electronically, we ask you to give by way of our Zelle account. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is as we lift Jesus, he will, he will, he will always give us a new life. As we lift him, he will give others new life. So lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zell account. Or you can give your tithes and offerings by mailing it in to New Beginning Church P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459. P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 775 seven seven four five nine seven seven four five nine and we'll be glad to to collect that from you those of you who still are not collected connected by way of zelle today you can still give to our cash app account our cash app is cash tag nbc souls cash tag nbc souls dollar sign nbc souls nbc s o u l s you can give by way of cash app. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of this broadcast. Thank you for being a part of our service on today. Next Sunday, we will be celebrating 28 years of uninterrupted ministry. We will be celebrating 28 years in our church anniversary. So please, ma'am, please, sir, help us to celebrate 28 years at this same time at 1045, 1045 a.m. Next Sunday, March 21st, we'll be celebrating 28 years in our church anniversary. Please be a part of that. Please prepare your gifts accordingly for that. On April the 4th, we will have our Re Resurrection Sunday, our Resurrection Service. Uh, in Resurrection Service, we are asking everybody to meet on the parking lot for our Resurrection Parking Lot Service. We want everybody in place by 1015 and we will start our broadcast at 1045. So if you are present in the city of Houston doing uh, Resurrection Sunday, that's April the 4th, come by and join us in our parking lot service. Our parking lot service, we'll be glad to have you a part of our parking lot service. We'll ask you to get here no later than 10, 10 15 for our Resurrection Sunday parking lot service. That's April the 4th, 2021. I'm looking forward to my vaccine uh, Wednesday. I'm looking forward to my final vaccine this Wednesday. Uh, I believe in vaccination. I believe that scientists are smarter than I am. I believe that scientists are smarter than politicians. And so I'll be getting my final vaccine this Wednesday. I want you to go ahead and get yours. And now we have a new weapon in the Johnson & Johnson single shot vaccine. If you were afraid of two shots, go ahead and get your one shot and uh, get vaccinated so we can get back to normal as soon as possible, as soon as possible. Please remember our daily Bible listening, our daily Bible listening. We are in the book of Judges now. We are in the books of, book of Judges. I think it's Judges chapter 5 is the end on today. So if you are behind, catch up. Go ahead and catch up. Listen to the word. And as you listen to the word, go ahead and journal what the Lord is speaking to you through the word. We found out a lot of things in the book of Joshua that we have taken for granted. We don't want to take anything for granted. We're not reading the entire Bible. We're listening to the entire Bible, which would be a lot easier for most of us. So go ahead and be a part of our Bible listening and Bible journaling. And by the end of this year, you should have your own little commentary of what God has said to you through the word of God. Amen. 
Let's pray for this offering. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and grace. We thank you for the givers. We ask you to bless them. We pray, Father God, that you bless those who are tithing. You promise, Lord God, that you will bless them in such a way that you will rebuke the devour for their sake. And Lord, we ask you to bless every gift, bless every person that has endeavored to give. We pray for jobs, we pray for income, we pray for increase. Lord, we ask you to bless them abundantly above all that they can ask or think. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for the victory in our finances. We pray for the finances of our members, the finances of our visitors. We pray for the finances of our church. We ask you to bless us now. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Let me say thank you again for joining us here at the New Beginning Church. We're at 4251 Shermai Road. Shermai is spelled S-C-H-U-R-M-I-E-R. S-C-H-U-R-M-I-E-R. Shermai Road, Houston, Texas, 77048. Come by and visit us, 77048. Again, thank you, God. Bless you, God. Keep you is our prayer. Let's go to God. Father God, we thank you now. We thank you for the healer in chief. We thank you for Jesus the Christ. The one who walked these mundane shores. The son of David. The great deity himself. Who has all dominion and power. We thank you that he's the long-awaited deliverer, the long-awaited healer. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus is the root of David, the offspring of David. We thank you that he's the stem of Jesse. He is the son of God made flesh. We thank you, Lord, that we are the descendants of David and that we are the one who walked under Jesus' Lordship. Lord, we ask you to bless every listener. Keep us focused, Father God, that we will have the revelation that Jesus is near, that we will request what we want from Jesus. And then we want to repeat our request in the midst of rejection. And Lord, we're asking you to reward us that we will rejoice forevermore and bless our rejoicing to be contagious. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus the Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. We're at the New Beginning Church. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.